So here we are restoring teeth in the lower and upper anterior, and I can do the posteriors later, or I could do them now, because notice I've made stops on his natural teeth. So I could do this all at once, or I could do it lower and upper, which is typically my, my typical routine. So in this case, typically, <clears throat> I would have restored the lower two incisors and the four molars, and then come back and done the upper. Sometimes if they're out of state or out of country, I'll do it all together, as long as I have my vertical there and I can take a good um, CR bite and make sure everything's in centric relation. <clears throat> the other question I had at break was about centric relation on provisionals. Make sure that at the stage that they're in provisionals, that you're equilibrating that, you're manipulating, you're getting that so CR stops to equal MI. So now from there on, you work in MI, right? Because that is CR. And that makes your life so much easier as you progress through a case. So I don't have to keep taking, checking. I, I'll always keep checking, but I'm in MI. And so that helps when you go to the lab with a case like this. I saw Pete's cases for years until all his patients died. But, um, <laughs> but I saw... <laughs> but I saw... <laughs> they would come back, like, I'm talking 30, 35 years later, and they would be in hygiene, and they would say, you know, the best thing I ever did was when Dr. Dawson uh, balanced my bite. And I look in the chart, it's like it never had to be rebalanced. I, I'm, and I have some of my own patients coming back now um, after a few years since I've been doing it so long, and it's amazing what they say and how they feel the difference when they have a good bite versus bad. You know, the people that seem to realize that's like, get the most amazed at this is when I treat dentists. It's like, I'll equilibrate a dentist and, and they're like, wow, that really does feel good. It's like, yeah, that's what we've been telling them, you. Know. So uh, it does make a huge difference. So we're gonna get those contacts first and then we're gonna work out our guidance and then we're going to be sure that the guidance is not too steep. How would I know if that guidance was too steep? I would be discluding the back teeth by a lot. I only need to disclude the back teeth by a little. So I can go ahead and shallow that out. I'm not going to touch the cusp tip. I'm not going to touch my incisal ledge or my centric stops. I'm just going to shallow out in between. Okay, till it makes sense. So you can see how this back teeth are discluding a lot. Um, I'm going to have to check that and be sure, but notice how we're coming off the cuspid on the lateral. So we have this progressive guidance where it comes off the cuspid, then the lateral, then the, then the central. And in a deep overbite, you will find a lot of posterior disclusion, very easy. No, no, yes. So the question is, once we dial it in, which is equilibrated, and we have the approved provisionals, do we take impressions of that and ask for custom guide table and all that? It's labial matrix. Yeah. Labial, absolutely. When we take impressions of the approved provisional, that's what the technician has to follow. I don't want that changed. I don't want the incisal edge changed. I don't want the length changed. I don't want anything changed, so that has to be dialed in and sent to the technician. And then I'll ask them to make an incisal matrix and a custom anterior guide table. Now, now we're doing a lot of um, digital. We're doing that digitally now in a lot of our cases where they'll scan the provisionals, marry it to the, the preps, and uh, print out the lingual contours. And at first I didn't trust that, so I had them make a custom guide table and that and I checked it out, but it seems to me like that's become very accurate. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah.